Hello and welcome to this video where I want to talk about the future of the Mario Kart series and theorise about what a potential Mario Kart 9 might look like and how it would stand out from and compete with the sheer amount of content on offering Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. As a lot of you probably know, there's currently 48 tracks on offer in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The original 32 from the base version of Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, and the additional 16 tracks added in with the original DLC packs. Recently though, Nintendo announced a huge DLC expansion coming to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in the form of the Booster Course Pack, which, when all six waves of tracks have been released, will double the amount of tracks in the game, bringing it up to a whopping 96 total tracks. That's almost 100 tracks in a single Mario Kart game, an absurd amount of content that will make Mario Kart 8 Deluxe the ultimate Mario Kart experience for quite some time. But that got me thinking, when Mario Kart 9 does eventually come out, probably on the next Nintendo console after the Switch, how will it compete with what's on offer in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? After all, it's probably a bit unrealistic to expect it to have 96 tracks or more, right? Well, I've come up with a list of things that I think Mario Kart 9 might do to make it better than Mario Kart 8 Deluxe without matching it in terms of the amount of tracks. So. Let's get into it. First things first, every new Mario Kart has to implement a major new gameplay gimmick to give it its own unique flavour. Mario Kart Double Dash had the character swapping mechanic, Mario Kart Wii had motion controls and the debut of bikes, Mario Kart 7 had gliders, and Mario Kart 8 had zero gravity. So it's safe to say that Mario Kart 9 will also have something similar to these elements too, which make the tracks featured in the game fit a particular theme. This topic could be its own video to be honest, but one idea I had was that maybe there's a mechanic where the tracks frequently split into two paths. One of them is a standard driving section, while another has you shrink down to a tiny size to take an alternative path through the level. Seeing everything from a different perspective, and maybe even seeing the other normal sized racers driving around, but they look massive compared to you. So there could be a track where you're driving around a barnyard, and there's an option to go outside through the main doors, or you can veer off to the side, hit an alternative path, and shrink down and go into a mouse hole, where you have to avoid all the mice and go up cheese ramps and stuff before connecting back to the main track. This would give the tracks way more replay value too, because you would want to experience all of the alternate paths in each of them, and find out which of these paths suits your style more. But let me know down in the comments what you think the gimmick of Mario Kart 9 will be. At this point, pretty much anything is on the table, so there's no such thing as a bad idea. I mean, during the development of Mario Kart 8, it was reported that Nintendo were messing about with the idea of having a drill attached to the carts that let them go underground. So, anything is possible, really. Outside of a new gimmick, which is inevitable though, the next thing I want to see is a way more diverse character roster. This is an area in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that I actually think is quite weak, and I think it's a huge shame that the new Booster Course Pass doesn't feature any additional characters. The Mario universe has so many characters that have never been in a Mario Kart game before, and even ones which have previously been in Mario Kart are strangely absent from 8 Deluxe. Like Donkey Kong Jr, Birdo, Koopa Paratrooper, Diddy Kong, Petey Piranha, Rob, Funky Kong, Honey Queen, and Wiggler. Even just having all of these return from the previous games would be great, but what about all of the characters that have never been in a mainline Mario Kart game? For example, a Goomba, Hammerbro, Piranha Plant, Spike, Chain Chomp, Pauline, Professor E. Gad, a standard Boo, a Pianta from Super Mario Sunshine, Captain Toad. I mean, they could start getting more obscure and have things like the Snowmen from Super Mario 64. The possibilities are endless, and that's if you only consider Mario characters. But of course, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe actually features quite a few characters from other Nintendo properties. With Link from The Legend of Zelda, Villagers and Isabel from Animal Crossing, and the Inklings from Splatoon. Based on this, it would be a fairly reasonable assumption to say that this will be even more of a focus in the next Mario Kart, potentially even having a few cups devoted to tracks from other series. 
So I wouldn't be surprised to see Samus from Metroid, Kirby from the Kirby series, Captain Falcon from F-Zero, and maybe even Pikachu from Pokemon. Opening the game up to other series like that could generate a lot of hype in the build-up to the game, because they could do Super Smash Bros style announcements, and even keep the hype going with DLC characters too. So I would be extremely surprised if this wasn't a part of the next game. Tying into the subject of a much bigger character roster though, another thing I really want to see is unlockable skins for all of the characters. This is a feature in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but it's somewhat haphazardly thrown together, with characters like Yoshi having skins which are different colours, Link having his traditional tunic or his Breath of the Wild outfit, but then we have situations where Mario, Tanuki Mario and Metal Mario are considered different characters. Then we have the Inkling boy and girl, as well as the two types of villager, who are different characters too, when really they should just be skins of the same character, surely. And yes, I do know that Metal Mario is probably considered a different character based on the fact he has a different weight class, which affects his stats compared to the standard Mario, but this didn't really have to be the case. They could have just have given him the same stats and had him been a skin, and I doubt anybody would have cared. But my overall point with this isn't just that some of these duplicate characters should be turned into skins instead, but also that Mario Kart 9 should feature way, way more character skins on top of this too. This has already been done with Mario Kart Tour, which is the mobile spin-off of the series, where we have skins like Pit Crew Toad, Free Running Cooper, Musician Mario, Halloween Rosalina, Reindeer Yoshi, Luigi's Mansion King Boo, and way, way more on top of that. Not only do I think that all of these should be in Mario Kart 9, but also have more on top of that too. Just looking at the impressive character roster in Mario Kart Tour makes me very upset that some of these aren't yet in a mainline game. This next thing is something that I kind of doubt that we'll actually see, but I would love for it to become reality. This is something that would really separate the next Mario Kart from any of the previous entries, and could also dethrone another particular kart racer as my favourite ever made. The game in question that I think is better than Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, at least at the moment before the booster course pack, is Crash Team Racing. And while I have several reasons I personally think this game is better, the one I want to focus on here is the fact that Crash Team Racing has a full-on single-player adventure mode. In this, you drive around a hub world which is all interconnected and featured several themed areas. You enter races to win trophies, you can replay the tracks in a time trial mode to win relics, or you can play them in a third mode where you have to not only win the race, but also find hidden C, T and R letters hidden in the track at the same time. This is amazing because it adds so much variety to the game, with it not always just being about straight up racing. But also, by collecting all of the trophies, relics and CTR tokens, you'll unlock more characters and tracks in the other modes of the game. It's a way better method of unlocking content, it offers way more variety than what would otherwise be there, and it gives the game a proper single player experience to go through. On top of this, you also have an actual story with cutscenes, you have boss battles, you have bonus levels where you have to collect all of the crystals in the battle arena levels within a certain time limit, and at the end of the game, you have to be entire cups against hard opponents to win gems, which unlock more characters. It's insanely good, and Mario Kart could pretty much straight up copy this, and it would be amazing. Obviously give it its own flavour and implement more objectives and stuff, but having some form of adventure mode would make the next Mario Kart feel way more complete as a proper game. Have it be playable in co-op too, and it would have something that even Crash Team Racing doesn't have. Even if Mario Kart 9 doesn't feature a full-on adventure mode though, which I think is probably going to be the case, at least bring back the mission mode from Mario Kart DS. This mode gave you challenges like driving through numbered gates in order, collecting a certain number of coins, or even fighting bosses, like this one where you have to knock a big bully off of the stage by using turbos. This is amazing, and it gives you an objective beyond just racing and coming first all the time. I want more variety than that.
The next thing I think Mario Kart 9 should do might actually be a little bit controversial, but it is something that really annoys me with all of the past Mario Kart games, and that's the way that character stats work. I don't like how certain characters belong to certain weight classes, and you can't really do anything to change that. Sure, in Mario Kart 8 you can customise the carts to sort of change your character's stats, but at the end of the day I really feel like the heavy characters with a better top speed are always typically the ones you should use, statistically speaking. What this means though is that I literally never use any of the light characters like Baby Mario, Toad, Koopa Trooper or Lakitu because I always feel like I'm just putting myself at a disadvantage gameplay wise. There's a few options as to what Mario Kart 9 could do about this. Firstly, the easy way out is to literally scrap character stats altogether and make every character the same, with the stats being affected by the different carts that you use. But then the same issue would apply where I would literally never use certain carts because they're objectively worse. So maybe do what Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled does and have the ability to swap what type of engine you're using. Having speed, acceleration, weight, handling and grip all tied to certain engines so that you can pick your favourites. Maybe even have some unlockable engines which are mixtures of certain stats as well. That would be cool and it would give you even more customization options. The other thing they could do is the Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed approach where the more that you use a specific character, the more experience they get and by leveling up you unlock a new engine for that one particular character. This would be good because this does incentivize playing as all of the different characters in order to unlock everything in the game. But either way, I feel like either of these approaches is better than what's currently offered in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now, something else that I would like to see in Mario Kart 9 is something that I've already actually alluded to a few times in this video already, but it's quite simply that I want a better way of unlocking things. In Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, not only is pretty much everything unlocked from the start, but the few things you do have to unlock, like the carts, wheels and gliders, are just unlocked by reaching an arbitrary coin total, and it gives you one of these things in a completely random order. Now this is pretty lame, and Mario Kart 9 should come up with something a lot better than this. Even just having a store where you can choose what to spend your coins on, with the more popular stuff costing more coins, would be great. But obviously I would never want to see any microtransactions associated with this, and neither would I want a time-based rotating storefront either. Just let us buy what we want from the store, purely with the coins we've collected and earned in the game itself. Maybe you could even earn coins in the adventure mode and by doing the standard Grand Prix mode and by playing the online too. That would be awesome. Of course, I wouldn't want everything in the game to be unlocked like this though, and I would want the potential adventure mode or returning mission mode, the Grand Prix mode and the time trial mode to unlock things like characters and skins as you progress through them. Maybe a good idea would be to unlock all of the characters through the gameplay itself and then you just buy the skins, carts, wheels and gliders in the coin shop. I think that would work, but whatever happens, I don't want to have nothing to unlock like in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It just doesn't feel very rewarding when everything is already there from the get-go. Now the final thing that Mario Kart 9 could do to make it superior to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is have a more refined and a more in-depth online system. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's online mode is perfectly fine. It works, you can play with friends, you can even do split screen and online at the same time, which is something that so many games don't bother implementing. But that isn't to say that this element couldn't be improved. For example, one major thing I would like to see is an online cup mode, where instead of having one race and there being a winner for that one race only, you do one of the Grand Prix Cups and the winner is instead the person with the highest overall score across the four tracks. Even better would be a mode where you could create custom cups by picking four of the tracks across the whole game and then maybe the online players vote on which of the custom cups on offer looks the best and whichever wins is the one that you play through. Mario Kart 7 had the ability to create custom cups and race them with your friends, so it's weird that this was scrapped completely for Mario Kart 8. 
On top of this, I think that the ranking system for the online mode could probably be expanded a bit too. Maybe unlocking banners, profile pictures, titles, and other stuff as you progress up the ranks. In Mario Kart 8, you just race, and the more that you play, the more a number next to your name goes up, and that's it. It doesn't actually do anything. As well, maybe there could be a mode where the items are customised a bit more, like maybe you want to race in a mode without the blue shells. Or maybe you want to race where it's shells only, and stuff like that. I think that would be pretty cool and it would give you more options for your online experience. The only other little nitpick with the online is that whenever you play it in the split screen mode, whoever the second player is always starts at rank 1000, regardless of whether or not they've played it before on that console. So what I want to see is a more persistent profile created for the second player, where it not only remembers their rank, but also remembers their cart setup and stuff for that particular console. I mean, why are all of the player 2s in the world always getting shafted like this? But yeah, I think that about sums up all of the ways I think that Mario Kart 9 could improve on Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Even with the staggering amount of tracks that will be on offer in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I think that Mario Kart 9 could be better in general even if it had only half the amount of tracks at launch. It's not always about the number of tracks on offer, but rather how those tracks are used and how they're implemented into the experience. And I think that Mario Kart 9 focusing on quality rather than quantity is probably the way to go. While it might be a very, very long time before we even get a glimpse at Mario Kart 9, I still think it's fun to theorise about it and come up with all of these crazy ideas about what it could be like. So let me know in the comments if you've got any more ideas on top of the ones that I've suggested. For now though, I'm really looking forward to all of this DLC being put into Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and no doubt I'll see you all out there on the road. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to see more stuff like this coming soon, and I'll see you next time. Bye!